Hi, I'm Jim Phelps, a psychiatrist, and I've been making this series of videos about lithium and the potential prevention of dementia. This one goes back and looks at a different question, which is the possibility of actually reversing an Alzheimer's that's already underway. I hope you may have seen the video about this one, the translation of a key article on research in mice that really shows lithium's potential for uh, changing the progression towards Alzheimer's. And maybe this one where for people who've gone uh, to the conclusion of, I'm ready to start doing this, what's the dose? But I wanna go back now and look again at that article, um, the key one showing lithium and its effect on dementia um, and looking at the possibility of reversing dementia that's already underway. The, art, the authors themselves said um, they want to investigate this directly in their aging mice. And here we're going to be looking at lithium orotate. If that's not a familiar version of lithium to you, those earlier videos will help you understand the difference between lithium orotate and lithium carbonate. So using lithium orotate, they looked at mice from age 17 months to age 22 months. Now in this particular Mouse, mouse strain, they develop Alzheimer's quite quickly. And by 17 months, they have a significant amount of uh, the amyloid plaque and neurofibrillary tangles. So the question now is, um, could you give them lithium and undo the amount of plaque that they've already formed? So here we'll see the comparison of giving them regular water or giving them water with some lithium orotate in it during this period of their advanced mouse age. With just the regular water, this is the amount of plaque. Now remember they'd formed it by age 17 months and we're looking now at age 22 months and that plaque is still there. What if they had been getting lithium orotate from age 17? to age 22, what, how much plaque do they have then? Less than half as much. So the authors of this paper submit that this shows that lithium orotate is actually reversing the plaque development in these Alzheimer's prone mice. And lastly, we see that same phenomenon here given to mice who are given either the lithium orotate or lithium carbonate or just their regular water. And the point of this slide is that lithium carbonate, um, the amount of plaque was less, but not significantly less. Um, it was the lithium orotate that really had the less than 50% um, of the plaque showing up um, in these mice that had been given lithium orotate from um, of advanced middle age to old age. Now, these are mice, mind you. What about in humans? Well, there is some previous research trying to use lithium to reverse Alzheimer's and nothing really was seen. Uh, perhaps one of the reasons is because that was using lithium carbonate and it would be wonderful and I hope we will see an attempt to redo that work uh, with people who have Alzheimer's, at least early Alzheimer's, um, using lithium orotate, but it will be a long time before we see those results. Now, in the meantime, there are other ways to treat Alzheimer's in humans um, using these monoclonal antibodies. Um, so this has just come along in the last few years. Great excitement amongst Alzheimer's researchers that these synthesized molecules um, might be able to reverse some of the damage of Alzheimer's, the very thing that we were seeing there in the mice, but in humans. So let's take a look at lecanemab, one of these monoclonal antibodies, and the results of their one and a half year trial. They used as an outcome measure, the clinical dementia rating scale um, which looks at memory and orientation as the, and the others you can see here. And the scale goes from zero to 18. And on this scale, getting worse, having your memory get worse 
um, is shown up with higher numbers. So getting worse means higher numbers. And what they found was that over the one and a half years of this trial, everybody was getting worse, but those who received the placebo got more worse, or conversely, those who got lecanemab got less worse, 27% less worse on a zero to 18 scale. But if we take this difference and then show it up on the zero to 18 scale, this half a point of difference that we see here, it looks like this on the zero to 18 point scale. A half a point difference is not very big on this scale. And there's an actual way of thinking about is a half a point, how big is a half a point on this scale? And that's called the minimal clinically important difference. This is from other studies saying how big a change in this particular scale, the clinical dementia rating scale, um, how big a change do you need in order to be able to like see it? Um, the patient comes back after six months, um, could a clinician actually see a change? And the answer then is, if you're looking at people with minimal cognitive impairment, a one point change on this particular scale is kind of like visible. Um, less than that would be not really easily detected. So the half a point difference wouldn't really show up if you were taking people with minimal cognitive impairment and then looking at them after a year and a half on lecanemab. Um, and likewise, if you were to start, as in this study they did with people with early Alzheimer's, the minimal clinically important difference on that scale that is being used here, the zero to 18 point scale, a minimal difference is two points. In other words, what they observed, half a point difference, is not really enough to see a big change in someone with Alzheimer's. It's measurable, but it's not clinically significant in the sense of you can see it. In the meantime, they did observe an incidence of severe side effects, side effects that would involve worsening cognitive function, for example, in, in the various studies that have been done with these monoclonal antibodies between one and a half and three and a half percent. So not a huge number, but a potential for it getting worse. And if you're really trying to figure out what you should do for a loved one with Alzheimer's, um, you may have learned it's important, especially now with these new monoclonal antibodies, to know the genotype at the APOE4 locus. So there are different um, alleles, different versions of the APOE4 gene um, or the APOE gene. And the APOE4 version um, means that people are at greater risk of developing Alzheimer's, and they're also at greater risk of having these severe side effects, so-called ARIA. Um, you can look that up if you're at this stage of your research. Um, and if you had two versions of that APOE um, that were both APOE4, um, the risk for side effects is much higher. So important at this stage, if you're looking at the monoclonal antibodies, to know what your APOE genotype is. So in summary, this is a very difficult choice. What to do at this stage, given what we know. Should you opt for the potential for an improvement with the monoclonal antibodies, which have demonstrated benefit in humans, although relatively small, or I think it is worth asking the question, although we are only just beginning to approach having the answer to this, um, or should one look at lithium orotate, which in mice was able to reverse those plaques, um, that, as you saw in the data here, um, but we don't know if that would be true in humans or not. So do you gamble? And I, I hope I've presented this in a relatively even way to suggest that we don't know the answer to that, but I think that anyone in this circumstance deserves to know that this is where we are. So thanks for watching. I'll look, now link some of those previous videos that might help you understand what we just went through. 
Uh, so here we see the link to um, what I said I was going to put in here, <laughs> the um, the nature paper, the paper that was so important, the, the original work in mice, of which I just showed you a piece, um, a video, just so you can see the whole thing. It's very, very powerful, uh, the work that they did. And then my summary of the history of this whole idea of lithium for the prevention of dementia, the timeline. Um, and then lastly, if after everything you've learned, you're deciding that it's time to take lithium orotate um, or something, some form of lithium, uh, what dose might you consider? Are you really ready to do that as the third video here?